jazz sequence on the internet i am joined as always by gary who is a literal astronaut formed in a lab in cape canaveral uh, he is binary jazz on the internet and i am also joined as always by allison she is actually a robot formed in a lab in cape canaveral uh they're doing a lot of work down there these days aren't they <laughs> leap loop <laughs> <laughs> multifunctional uh she is allison plus on the internet uh we are collectively binary jazz on the internet this is our show uh in which allison comes up with a topic gary and i don't know what the topic is we may or may not know anything about the <laughs> sometimes topic. we do we yeah. may or may not know anything about the topic and we attempt uh, or succeed at talking about or most often around the topic uh, until our timer runs out and then we answer questions that have been submitted by you, the listener and viewer at home. Um, and yeah, that's, that's for, for our audio only friends it is worth noting that there was a very dramatic point at you, the listener. <laughs> as dramatic as we ever get. <laughs> I can be pretty dramatic. I feel like we got pretty dramatic when we were talking about, um, uh, the Dyson Sphere, the end of that episode. I feel like there was some... I got, I got a little salty. <laughs> salty Star Trek opinions. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Maybe we shouldn't start with that. This is, this is uh, going to be going out the week following Independence Day. But for us, it, living in the past, uh, at least for two of us, who are living in the past? It was uh, Independence Day yesterday. Because one of us is living in the past. Yes, in the United <laughs> States. Yes. Well, I mean, we're living in the past because the, the, this is, people aren't going to listen to this until next week, so they'll be in the future. And but you said two of past. us. But which two? Well, because the other the other one of us doesn't live in the United States, so it wasn't which one. Is it me, Gary? <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler, live, Allison lives in Canada. I live oh. in the past, but my my independence day was <laughs> even more in the past on July 1st. So But it, but last Sunday was a holiday for you, right? Yeah, Canada Day. That's or, exciting. Oh, Canada. Yeah. What's 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 like a traditional uh, celebration uh, of Canada? Uh, uh, like I know the traditional celebration of Independence Day is to blow things up. I mean, so. yeah, same. I feel like same. Independence okay. is celebrated with fireworks and okay. Barbecue. So I learned okay. yesterday. Um, so in England they have coffee. In England they have uh, bonfire night, which is the fifth of November. Which is remember, remember the fifth of November when uh, Guy Fox blew up the Parliament building, mm -hmm. and they celebrate that through fireworks. Oh. Which seems really weird because, like, it seems like you're celebrating an act of terrorism. Yeah. I, I, I guess the idea is that you're remembering the act of terrorism. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that, that's and, and, and they all, um, I was told actually, too, that they all march on Parliament with the Guy Fox masks, masks on. Oh, I was taking that's it. That's not a thing I, I knew. A whole new level. Yeah. Also, oh, wow. creepy. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like it's kind of like celebrating when Canada like went in and like burnt down the White House. Like it just feels like like a, <laughs> like a weird. <laughs> when when was that? Because I I might be on board with it wasn't, making this a was, holiday. That was also in the past. There's no holiday. <laughs> but maybe we should make it a holiday. That's an alternate. Uh, I don't, yeah, that's the alternate timeline. Alternate history. I, I I'm not really. Hung up it's on the one where here. George Washington was assassinated <laughs> during the, the Revolutionary War. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So what day is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Washington. That's why we celebrate Washington's birthday. 
and nothing else about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought maybe we could help like the lagging. Never mind. I, let's get to it. <laughs> How was y'all's uh, Independence Day? Was what I was going to ask. That's where I was going with this whole discussion. Yes, Clever. Luper. It was yeah. pleasant. <laughs> it's rainy. Um, Our tradition is to sleep in a tent, and uh, at two thirty, with the kids, had a little bit of rain, and I laid there and thought, "Well, that's good. Like we dodged anything major." And then at four o'clock, it like monsooned, so I had to rush children inside and. Um, yeah, pieces of tent are strewn about my porch here. It's good that the weather decided to uh, rain following the fireworks of, of the 4th of July, though. 4th of July is really good in Florida because it typically rains a lot this time of year. So, I mean, you can, like, blow things up, and most stuff is too soggy to catch on fire. That is not the case in Utah. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. Well, I know. But the approach in Utah is to make everything so scarce that there's nothing to catch on fire. Yes, except like sand doesn't burn. Except so, for, except for failing miserably at that. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> the place that my parents live in in Colorado uh, canceled fireworks this year because it's just way too dry, um, and they also apparently banned smoking in the town for the summer. <laughs> nice. Wow. Which, so they're just like, we don't want stuff to catch on fire because of stupid reasons. <laughs> I, I would I would be for that. Yeah, it was, um, this is the first year that it was not legal in our neighborhood to blow up fireworks. And it was also not legal in um, my partner's parents' neighborhood uh, to blow up fireworks. Usually we go over there to blow up fireworks at their house. And then and then they're like a short walk to the park where they where they do the big fireworks. So we do the you know little fireworks, our own things in their driveway. And then we walk to watch the so we all instead went to the parking lot of a church that is run by somebody that her dad knew um and did our fireworks there and that was a short walk to the park where they were doing the fireworks um, being in florida i have no idea what the laws are related to fireworks um I, and so this may be a thing that happens everywhere but it, i know it definitely happens in florida all like the little pop-up stands like you can go buy fireworks but you have to sign a sheet that says you're using them for um, agricultural purposes to scare away birds or yeah so every, yeah, so no, around that's not a holidays thing. everyone um signs an affidavit saying that they're farmers basically to buy fireworks from the pop-up stand so they can launch things into the sky yeah it's not um, a thing and then there's all sorts of like gray market fireworks that are like well you really can't buy this but we happen to have it in our stand to sell yeah i yeah i mean they, they if went you until want, if you want the really midnight scary... or so if you want the really scary big fireworks, you have to you go to Wyoming. Um, you go right across the border. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 They don't I have work. one guy, one guy named uh, Randy, who has this huge shed out back. And he sells like hand carved items up front. But you say, I want the good stuff. And he walks you back there and you can like <laughs> whatever you need. His whole year leads up to celebrating Independence Day. And I, yeah. I once did, so in high school, uh, we were given an assignment to make a commercial for, um, I don't even remember what. So my commercial was uh, for Crazy Eddie's Sporting Goods. And Crazy Eddie worked out of the back of his car. <laughs> and the whole thing was about how he was crazy. And, he, and like I had a baseball bat and I had all these various things. And I just thought, we've got baseballs. <laughs> we've got footballs. <laughs> we've got gloves. We've got fishing equipment. He's got everything in that truck. Yeah. yeah. The best part was was <laughs> breaking the, Filming the, it, clearly. the tackle box. <laughs> oh, no. Tackle box of the baseball bat. I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use it and I'm going to get rid of it in the most dramatic way possible. Clunk. <laughs> oh. No, I'm like a skittish dog when it comes to fireworks. So I'm always a little relieved when... Um, when they're over. Nothing bad happens. Yeah. 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 Given that we just had a fire uh, right you know, feet from our house uh, this a uh, couple months ago, I was also rather relieved to see that it was not in our neighborhood this year. Yeah. Like, I appreciate the beauty of them from afar, but the loud, startling noises I could do without. So, yeah. Especially when I know that uh, they're amateur fireworks and people don't know what they're doing, that heightens the surprise element. I, I'm amazed at the quality of stuff that people buy to blow up. 
That's true. I mean, there's like, there's amazing fireworks that launch from six houses down. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need to go downtown and watch a big display. Like, my drunk neighbors will do it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Put some music and on. Then, <laughs> I don't need to. I can listen to theirs. <laughs> it's, <not laughs> it's like timed. You're like, this is better than Disney. Who needs this? <laughs> I, it's, it's not far from it. It's not far from it. Yeah, I think from, from, the, from the tent, we could see like six different houses throwing things into the air. So it's a good spot. What I always find interesting is when people shoot their fireworks off and they're within like viewing distance of like the big city or, you know, organization yeah. doing the fireworks. And so they're doing their fireworks at the same time the other fireworks are going on. Like, are they trying to like participate? <laughs> I, uh, that's what I was. That's what I decided last night was that they must be trying to like, for themselves, like join in to the big fireworks display with their own with their own fireworks because it doesn't make sense otherwise. Like, hey, I'm yeah, that's really cool, and those are going really high. But these things are awesome. These ones, <laughs> no, it's like a collaboration. <laughs> yes, it's open. It's source. like why would you? Why would you? Yeah, why would you own like a a phone in your pocket when you have a computer that can process so much more? Why not use a big computer? That's so anyway, what's what's our what's our topic today? Fireworks. Fireworks. Oh. Our topic today. Pyrotechnics. Oh, God, I know about this. <laughs> no. <laughs> our topic for today is proprioception. Oh. No, don't say oh like you know what it is, Gary. <laughs> I think that'll be my shtick from now on. Um, <laughs> At least pretend for like five minutes. Give me like some. some oh, I'll be pretending for a lot longer than five minutes today. <laughs> <laughs> um, P R O P R I O, exception. <laughs> that was that movie that. Um, <laughs> it was the sequel. It, it's yeah. So instead of going in and time getting longer, as they go in, time gets shorter, right? It's like reverse of Inception. <laughs> So, so it's only like an eight-minute movie, but it feels like it's hours long. Is that the idea? I feel like I've seen many movies that feel like they're eight hours long. I'm gonna have to watch Inception today. Have you, you have you actually seen it or no? Inception? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought yeah, you meant. Better... Like, I'm gonna finally get around to see. <laughs> no, no, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, li- I like. I, I like the concept of anyway. Uh, proprioception. It is a new hybrid vehicle by Toyota. It is. I always appreciate the Gary deep sigh. I feel like that needs to be <laughs> trademarked. <laughs> I hope the microphone picks it up nicely. I suppose I could listen and find out at some point. It's okay. I'm the faithful listener here. Um, I feel like I... I, I... I feel like I know what it is, but I'm not remembering. It's a word that is familiar, but I, yeah. I, I feel like I'm really um, pushed to it. Like, it feels like it, it sounds like perception a bit, so I'm pushed to associate it somehow with that because of the sept portion, but it's probably not. <laughs> well, you could go the, the old route that you tend to go of, like, with the Latin or the Greek route. <laughs> Yeah, which would work if I actually knew Latin or Greek <laughs> instead of made it up. Proprio, I think, means first. Like, right. Correct. And Seption um, is, I don't know. I don't know what Seption, yeah. It's I, self-acceptance, I, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. Yes. <laughs> I think you should um, keep going the sequel to Inception. Or <laughs> no, it's not a sequel. It's a prequel. Oh, prequel. Because it happens before Inception. Before Inception, there's proprioception. <laughs> Say the word again. Proprioception. Right word? Okay, it was the right word. For some mm-hmm. reason, I dropped a syllable in my head. I don't even know which syllable. <laughs> it just didn't seem right. <laughs> They're not all pro- important, these it's syllables. Not proception. No. Proception. No. Proception. Proception Pre-o. is the, uh, the uh, perception of professionals. <laughs> Negative. Proception. That dude um, is a professional. What? That one over there, also professional. Oh, yeah. I don't know what they do, but they are professional. That person, 
no. <laughs> very, very, very little of that happening last night. Very little of that proception happening last night. That guy doesn't know what he's doing. No. <laughs> uh, hmm. Proprioception. All right. Are you throwing out of this? Or... Uh, no, I'm, no I, I, thought I, I thought I had a thing. You had a thing. Fleeting. Yeah. Prio, let's just, let's break it down into its, its, its pieces, as is our custom. Proprio. <laughs> well. Proprio is, is, is that right? Own, yeah, proprio is its own prefix. What does that mean? Uh, like first. Or most important. Like proprietary. No, because prologue means like after, right? Yes, but the, pro is, is different. Proprio is like. Uh, I'm not sure I'm buying this. Okay. <laughs> you can you can not buy it. That's fine with me. He's not selling it. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving it away. It's a blowout. Crazy Eddie. <laughs> he pulled it off the back of his truck. You want proprios? I've got proprios. <laughs> what type of firework? Clearly. <laughs> oh man, the names of fireworks are so bizarre, aren't they? That's true. So we had a we had a a golden barrage. I believe, which we we did, we blew that up, and that was like twenty five things that shoot up in the air and they're vaguely gold colored. And then we did another thing, and then like I said, okay, kids, what what's because I let the kids pick out the things. I'm like, what's the next thing? And and my son's like, silver barrage. I'm like, is that just the same thing with silver colors? Like, yes. I'm like, let's <laughs> do something else in between. Let's mix it up just a little. <laughs> just a little bit. I mean, and I know it gets repetitive, but let's just not do the exact same thing twice. <laughs> Just a little bit of a variation. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm just saying the word over and over again, hoping something will come. Proprioception. Up. Proprioception. It's going to lose meaning if you say it over. I mean, actually, that might be a good thing. <laughs> well, just that's saying it over and over again. Yet, so. Go for that. Maybe, maybe it's have... holding a lot of meaning in this moment. <laughs> maybe it'll have a proprioception and gain meaning. Um, See what I did there? <laughs> There, you're way too lost in thought over this. Well, I was thinking about other words that have section, like reception, right? Mm -hmm. But, but that doesn't really help me understand what reception is. Like reception, like let's say inception and reception are the two words I know with section in it, because they are the two words I know with section in. Um, so reception would be to receive and put into, right? Like wrap your antennas would receive the signal and put it into your TV, right? Inception would. Not win you an Oscar, clearly. <laughs> so I'm having trouble. Man, once you explain it, I'm gonna feel dumb. Yes, well, as is our custom. I feel like that's yeah, that's the end. Maybe we should cover that part in the opening too. Like that's the thing that happens. <laughs> the goal of this is not for us to look smart. The goal of this is this is for us to mission make, accomplished. Make shit oh. up until until we give up. And, I don't yeah. know if the end goal is to make you feel dumb. Can we put the spin on no. it? Like you walk away having learned a thing? Yes. Dude, I, I use every possible opportunity to use the word petrichor <laughs> now that I know what that is. <laughs> I, do, I do relish that one quite a bit because I'm just like, oh, I smell of petrichor. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, Aaron is like, mm, I smell rain. I'm like, petrichor. The petrichor. <laughs> That's my, it, uh, and that's it. Just petrichor. That's the only. My one. manager dropped that word on a on a call I was on with him, and uh, I'm like, oh yeah, I love that smell. He was impressed, and I felt validated, <laughs> smart. So, if nothing else, nothing else. it fleetingly yeah. helped me in a one on one. For really, I so better than skills. better than like the Dyson sphere of hot dog meat. <laughs> oh, that didn't help anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. I I, you know, that's that's an appropriate food for a cookout. I'm going to say that, isn't it? That's a, that's a true Independence Day celebration food. That's like I might try and see if I can't get that rolling for next year. <laughs> Literally rolling. rolling. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Man. Ugh. What you do? What you do is you dig a pit, and you put charcoal in the pit, 
and then you put the Dyson sphere of hot dog meat in the pit on the charcoal, and then you cover it up, and then you roast it like a. You roast. put There's it on a, the proprioception and rotate it. There are manual and electric powered ones. Alternately, there, alternately, you do you do the 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 in order to get it fully cooked all the way through, you do the Mister Wizard uh, science experiment with hot dogs, where you electrocute the hot the Dyson sphere of hot dog. Oh, my neighbors have um. <laughs> solar panels so maybe we can have the solar panels up to this dyson sphere yes and yes you get the solar panels and you jack it directly into the 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 sphere of hot dog yeah <laughs> you, oh. i feel so like <laughs> nauseous <laughs> if i don't want any more coffee today yeah if it explodes you cooked it too long yeah kids are like standing back holding buns open like waiting to catch <laughs> flying <laughs> Meat shrapnel. <laughs> Meat shrapnel. <laughs> That's happy Fourth of July. <laughs> um, nothing I, better I, uh, than celebrating the Fourth of July with meat shrapnel. There's a there's a local barbecue. I have to go back to this because you were talking about digging a pit. There's a local barbecue place um, that's been around for a long time, and they're they're I don't know they've got a dozen locations in town, and their slogan you hear all the time in the radio is, "If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit." because they have their like pit smoker inside the building. So when you walk in, the first thing you see is like guys like working their meat at the pit. <laughs> I could have said that a much better way. <laughs> 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 We're just going to steamroll right over that. <laughs> Proprioception, back to the task at hand. Yeah, I think we need I, a definition like, at this point. I feel like we we generally we generally keep this this show I mean, not necessarily clean as far as language particularly particularly, but we but at least clean in terms of content, and that's the first time we've really ventured into NC seventeen territory. <laughs> yeah, my bad, my bad, y'all. That was absolutely not intentional. But as soon as it left my mouth, I'm like, there's so oh, no. many things. There's so many meat things that you can say. <laughs> Yep, that that just come out badly. So I mean, it's not. I, I don't blame you, particularly, but it was, yeah. And it took us thousands of episodes to get here. Thousands. We thank our sponsor, Bono's Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Working that meat over the pit. <laughs> if you don't see the pit, you must acquit. <laughs> <laughs> that that right there. That's a much better. Oh. <laughs> Much better motto. They have a sandwich called the Bohog. You're really it's... talking to the wrong audience again. Oh, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> like, I'm trying to get on board, and I'm like, yeah, like, like local business, like, fresh. And then I'm like... <laughs> Beat. No, I get it. I... Shrapnel, as it was. <laughs> I made veggie yeah. burgers yesterday. There you go. Yeah. I still don't want to be pelted with like pieces of veggie meat either. Yeah, I, I didn't electrocute it. I just put it, I, I Ooh, amongst, it and then I yeah. put it on the grill. Just yeah. old school. Yeah. Were you just looking for grill marks on it? You wanted like a little bit of sear for the crunch or? Uh, well, I was also grilling. Well, like if you get a little sear, like it, it's not crunch, but it, like texture. <laughs> I mean, I do like that. I, I also, I hadn't actually um, grilled these on the grill before and I was grilling other things. So I figured I would, I would do that. Um, with these, you, I usually fry them. Um, but yeah, I just, I put them on the grill and it gets a little bit of a smoky flavor, but not, not too much actually. Hmm. I also grilled uh, veggie dogs and mushrooms and zucchini. It's good stuff. That's a, that's a much better follow up to the Dyson sphere. Yeah. Yeah. See, so yeah, yeah, I thought I, I would I, cleanse the palate. This, this, this feels a bit nice, settled in, back to where we normally are. It doesn't feel like mayhem, like fireworks exploding randomly everywhere, as it did for about five minutes there. It's kind of, kind of an uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know. Keep going. Uncomfortable energy. Yeah. The, pal the palate cleanser, proprioception. Yes. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. The proprioception of the comment of the con Let, conversation. Let's clear. Let's clear the air. <laughs> all right then uh i think i think i think we should i think gary needs to know what it means i, I think we should ask alice <laughs> um, so what does it mean 
so proprioception is the sense of positioning of your own body in relationship to itself. Nope. So like, for instance, like you have impaired proprioception when you get pulled over for a DUI and you can't figure out where oh. your hand is in relationship to your hand. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So it, when you um, like lay on your arm weird and it, it, it was all tingly, yeah. Is that, 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 is, that falls under the same category as proprioception when you try to lift yeah. it up and it's numb and you drop it on your face? Because you can't, yeah, you can't basically yeah. control it in relationship to your own self. Yeah. So, be, so being drunk is clearly the, like the, the obvious one that comes to mind, but there's, there's a lot of other situations like dehydration, I find. Where I'm oh, maybe. Thirsty, you know, a bit, a bit dizzy. There's more permanent ones, like if you like permanently lose ah. a limb or something like that. Um, and then there's also like brain injuries can cause it a lot of the time, which would be, um, I think it's the cerebellum, but I'm not positive. In proprio, Love them. on one's own, it means yourself, basically. Wait, say that again? In proprio means on one's uh -huh. own. So proprio means like your own, yourself. So okay. proprioception is perception of yourself. Okay. Yeah, physical. Like physical, like location. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I was close neat. with the proprio being first. <clears throat> sort of. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't close at all. <laughs> but it's interesting because right. it's like, it's what causes you to be able to like walk in a dark place without losing your balance because you don't need to be seeing your feet to know. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Well, yeah, I know. On a good day. <laughs> huh. Or like, drive a car like you don't have to be looking down at your feet to know what you're doing with the pedals so yeah ideally <laughs> i mean these are all yeah. ideal situations <laughs> i'm speaking for myself and my driving technique <laughs> yeah so like if like like learning to ride a bike is like that it's expanding your proprioception to understand like the balance thing right mm -hmm. like where you need to position your center of mass and all that sort of stuff and yeah, you don't need to be totally. like looking, like even like touch typing or things like that. Where oh, wow. You don't need yeah. to be looking to know what you're doing with your hands. So there's even like micro optimizations that we unconsciously make as far mm -hmm. as like increasing appropriate stuff. Like I know where my coffee cup is when I'm driving the van. Like reach and grab without yeah. looking for it. Well, and it's like when you have like a drink with a straw and you like are like, I'm just going to drink out of this straw. And then like you totally miss. <laughs> Put it in your straw. nose. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> where it's just like it's. Yeah, it's one of the. Why are metal straws becoming popular? Because plastic straws kill animals. I get that. I'm on board. Like I don't. I don't. I'm. I feel like plastic straws are, are not ideal, but I feel like metal is introducing like a level of danger I don't want. Like just take the <laughs> lid off and drink it. Like danger? Wait, what? What kind of metal? So it's, not like, it's not like barbed wire straw. <laughs> <laughs> well, here in Florida. <laughs> um. I, I mean, I just feel like a plastic straw, like you miss and poke yourself in the nose, the straw is going to bend, right? You stab yourself in the nose with a metal straw, like you could leave a mark. I mean, I guess I'm drinking very violently. <laughs> yeah, you need to practice your proprioception. Well, <laughs> maybe, perhaps. Um, but I mean, like if you're, you know, like you're drinking and you like hit a bump or something, right? I'd rather just stab myself in the roof of the mouth with a plastic straw than a metal one. I don't know. The, in, other places, in other places, um, paper straws are, are a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's fair. Um, it still seems wasteful, though. It's like a one-off use thing, right? Like yeah. use well, like like paper is recyclable versus like not. Sure, 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 sure. But better to not have made this, the paper straw at all and just drink out of your hands. Just like walk up to the soda fountain and flap it up. Right? Just drink out of the cup. I guess is the other argument. But straws are so much fun. I I agree. We have um we have several bendy straws that make fairly regular appearances in my house. I remember when I was a kid, it was always like a special occasion. I made a bendy straw. Man, to hell with that. It's always bendy straw kind of day. I will, I will drink. Like loopy, you know. Yeah, like the, those were great. We've got one that has um, a Wally on it at the top. Nice. Yeah, it's like a circle with him sticking out. It's pretty cool. I stay more hydrated if there are straws involved. Like I will drink more of whatever the liquid is just because straws are easier for me to like absentmindedly drink from. Hmm. Little known Alice in factoid. 
<laughs> I need one of those hats with like the two cups on the side so I can <laughs> be in calls like this with my headphones. Yeah. They're attached to your headphones. <laughs> yeah, why is that not it? Why, why can't I buy those? I need Bluetooth, like beer, I mean, it's typically for beer cans, but you can put any, any drink yeah. in there, any beverage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Really Before we get into questions. Oh, are we into um, Oh, well, we have we, the, the countdown clock has begun, so so now I I dance very nervously. Um, do you soda like like real like what's that? I don't see dancing. This is this is as much dancing as I do. Um, <laughs> what um what was I going to ask you? I was going to ask you sodas like natural sodas, you know, not high fructose corn syrup. No, you don't do soda. I cut out soda. Jeez. Uh, soda cheese. <laughs> I cut out soda like five, six, seven years ago, like completely cold turkey. Um, wow. I had some some excellent soda the other day. It made me think. Of it. I'm not a big soda drinker. I had um, it was like some black cherry soda. I remember remember who, but it was really good. Occasionally, I, occasionally I'll drink uh, root beer, or like one of those, you know, especially like yeah. those sort of micro brew type things. But it's like special yes. occasions. Yeah, like I like those like fancy sarsaparilla. I love that. Nice. So, so if I have soda, that'll be what I opt for. But most of the time, I don't. Yeah, I'm not looking for it, but this water's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I like carbonated things. Like I'm like a fan of fizzy water and stuff like that. Just I don't like fizzy water if it if it's just water, I like fizzy other things. Mm. You know, like broccoli. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, fizzy broccoli. <laughs> I go to the market. I I say I give me some fizzy broccoli, and they do, and it's amazing. You know, no, like other carbonated fizzy meat spheres, <laughs> other carbonated beverages that are more flavored than just fizzy sure. water, like carbonated water. Um, but when I when I'm at like a restaurant and I and I like I don't want soda. This is silly. I'll I'll order like a tonic water, but it's pretty much just Seven Up. Fancy makes you feel fancy. <laughs> Does yeah, you know. So do we have questions today? Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, I'm going to lead oh. off with this question. It's actually uh, one of the newer questions. I'm going to lead off with this one. With apologies to Lisa, who has submitted a ton of questions, and yeah. we'll have those in the queue. But I'm going to lead off with this one because it shows that the listener actually has listened to episodes, and this was <clears throat> a surprise to me that. <laughs> that I, I felt like it needed to be uh, noted. It is from Kevin, and Kevin, uh, Kevin uh, expresses, uh, I really enjoyed the what makes a salad a salad conversation. Every time I eat a bowl of fruit or pasta now, I think about whether or not it's actually a salad. What is your favorite pasta shape and why? I also like how it just goes, here's the thing I'm going to talk about, pivot, we're going to go over here now. <laughs> Yes. Clearly a listener. Yes. <laughs> yeah, clearly, clearly someone I could hold a conversation with. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So favorite well, Kevin, I'm glad. Favorite well, Kevin, Kevin, I'm glad you asked. Um, ravioli. Filled with because what? Because I like, I, it doesn't matter. It's a shape that I'm excited about. Yeah. It's a mystery. It can be filled with anything. Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think my favorite is tortellini for basically the same reason, but I like tor I like the shape of tortellini a bit better. The problem is there's there's no good gluten free and vegan tortellini. Mm. That's a market you need to start up, if for no other reason than just for me. Just yeah, just <laughs> gluten free and vegan tortellini, please. Hmm. Thank you. Interesting. Feels like a challenge. <laughs> Feels like I need more spare time. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you could make gluten-free pasta and then you could make a vegan filling to put in it yeah but that would be just so much work i yeah. just want to buy the, i mean i used to before we were like gluten-free and, and vegan we would you go to the store you get a little package of tortellini you throw it in the pot and cook it up and it's amazing well, yeah but usually it has yeah. lots of cheese or there's cheese ingredients in it so there's the vegan part and the and the the, the uh, obviously pasta, pasta has egg in it egg, yeah. yeah the pasta's almost uh definitely got wheat in it so yeah. That is yep. a market that's untapped. It is, doesn't it? Hmm. Allison, what's your favorite shape of pasta? Um, if we're going noodles, I like fettuccine noodles. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a... I love gnocchi when I can eat it. 
if it's just mm. like little pockets of potato with or without, hopefully without gluten, but I won't lie, I've glutened myself for some good gnocchi. <laughs> My dad makes homemade gnocchi, so I'm very willing to gluten myself for homemade things with quality flour. You said gnocchi, and I was spelling it N O K I in my head until you said potato. I'm like, oh, gnocchi. Oh, gnocchi. Excuse me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't turn. I don't. Gluten free pasta isn't that good, so I don't uh, partake a lot of the time. There's a couple things out. There's a couple of things out there that are pretty good. We'll talk. Awesome. But like, I love. Yeah, fettuccine, I have fun. Mem like, I just like noodles because I like twirling them. Yeah. I like, yeah, I just like the sauciness of a, of a nice noodle. It's also pretty easy to find get decent uh, gluten-free. Also true. Yeah, the, the shells and, and other shapes are a little bit, if you're... More difficult, huh? Yeah. Tinkyata makes basically everything, uh, and most of their things are okay. Um, other things other companies that make other types of gluten-free noodles are kind of sketchy. There's lots of quinoa noodles and they just crumble. Yeah. I would imagine the texture wouldn't be great. Wait, what are the bow ties called? Those are fun as well. They're called bow ties. No, they have, have a real. Oh, farfalle. Like, uh, farfalle. Far, 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 farfalle. Farfalle. Far, yeah, I know, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure it's farfalle. He was character on Sesame Street. <laughs> Uh, okay, with now, less than a minute, time for the question. With, with less than a minute to go, what is the most ridiculous thing you have spent money on for yourself coming from Lisa? What is the most ridiculous thing you've spent money on for yourself? Ridiculous. Hmm. Ridiculous to others or myself? Because I think other people, to go back to being a blender person, I think people would think that the amount of money I spent on a blender would probably be ridiculous. Um, I'm making note know. for our next episode. I'm introducing us as blender people. That, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but I think this is the most ridiculous thing I've spent money on, which is my drone. Oh. It serves basically no purpose other than random yeah. flying. Droning. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, other ridiculous things I've spent money on. I'm like looking um, around the room. <laughs> I bought an ocarina last summer. Didn't learn to play it. But you don't, you hadn't played one previously? No. Yeah, no, it's, it's ridiculous fine, if you don't learn to play it. If if you buy an instrument and you don't know how to play it and it just stays in a not knowing how to play a reality, that's, that's pretty ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. It was cheap, though. Um, I mean, what I should probably do is put my Amazon purchase history. I would be surprised at the ridiculous stuff I'd have purchased. Ridiculous. I'm just like, this is a fun question. I'm like looking around. I know that there's yeah. really There's silly. not a short answer to this. I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot. I've made I mean, like, if Chris is like, Chris is like, I brought a, I bought a drone. I'm like, well, I bought I have a pocket drone. Ones. There's a drone on my neighbor's house that I used to own. <laughs> used um, to own, but now it lives on your. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.